been dreaming. It's now that I woke, everything that I see, what it seems, man. I guess I've been dreaming. in there bow peace and love to all the guys and guys in the high vibrating species on the planet high vibrating that is peace to you academy peace and love to you come on in we now with number three and final of apotheosis Apoth- apotheosis i apologize <laughs> well we're back with that uh third and final final part of that segment so, if you haven't uh, caught part one or two, go back and check those out, and then join us back here for part three. You know what I'm saying? We'll be over here getting it busting, and we don't mind running it back for you, so you can get it busting with us. You know what I'm talking about? Come on in, shallow law. Jazz in the back. Ace in the back, please. Ace, ace, ace in the back. Because we ain't trying to hear you. We is not trying to hear you. Okay? I ain't trying to hear you. We're here for the truth, baby. I'm talking about. And it's been getting deep. And this looks like the longest segment um, of the series. Good 40 minutes. Okay. So, we ain't going to waste too much time. Because we already know what we're dealing with. If you don't, apotheosis is basically transforming into a god, which is happening currently on your timeline yours they just don't want to tell anyone but I'm here to tell everyone hey hey tell everyone that's right you ain't got to believe me though you go do the research yourself that's what I implore I implore that you go do your own research your own due diligence get it in and make a conclusion for yourself but regardless cost uh, what is that cognitive dissonance and disbelief and all that other stuff does not make it not real and it's not going to make it not happen and it's coming coming alright so okay mate I hope y'all are good you know what I'm saying oh. um, of course no numerology um, and I think this one about to get, get serious because he said we was going to cover a couple of things in the last video he said they was going to cover a couple of things about why certain things are what it is. We're just here to see if he's going to lie to us or not. It's on him. We own him, y'all. So, okay, let me, without further ado, I hope you got your need because I do. Uh, and let's go ahead and get this thing busting, shall we? Y'all ready? Let go. There you go. Apotheosis, part three. Part three. The SCP Foundation has drawn a line in the sand and initiated a war against the entities formerly known as humans. The X-Men. In spite of everything that has changed, they have decided to maintain their commitment to normal baseline humanity and to maintain anything and anyone that could be considered anomalous. In the third and final part of the Apotheosis story, this war between the SCP Foundation and the anomalous humans affected by SCP-3396 yes. will finally come to a climax. Let's see. In the article SCP-3731, we're given a complete timeline of the war, as Victory! well as some fun glimpses at the type of weapons and tools the Foundation used to combat millions of super-powered humans. In the final tale, Thrive. We'll get to see the aftermath of the war, and although it won't provide every answer we might want, it will provide a conclusion. SCP-3731 is the designation for the sapient population of Earth, the entities formerly known as humans. I'll continue to refer to them as mutants throughout the story for simplicity's sake, but really these entities are far more common and normal than humans. The Foundation, despite their best efforts, failed to contain the spread of the 3396 infection, 
And by this point, every living human outside of a zone in the western United States has been converted. This orange zone, completely controlled by what's left of the Foundation, is their last bastion of normalcy amid a ruined world. This orange zone was formed as part of the Foundation's Alabaster Protocol, which involves shifting the Foundation's entire directive to handling this problem. Now that's an ironic spot for that to be, huh? Yeah, right. Uh, anybody mind telling me what's, what's right here? These would be the Cayans. This is Navajo country? Yeah, this is where the Cayans are. And where where there's a portal, there's a lot of uh, old ancient Kemet uh, artifacts and pyramid, all types of stuff is here. They and they got it hiding good too. Trust me, they got it hiding real good. And then they then you can't even go in the canyon, but we know what's there. All right, but yeah, that that is a very ironic place to for this to to be at. I mean, why not? All that desert, all that room, yeah, why not? Why not, right? Obviously. All research personnel Obviously. are now assigned to developing technological, paratechnological, and thomic countermeasures to the mutants. Oh, yeah. And a number of How portable SCPs have been relocated to the orange zone, while most immovable objects have been either decommissioned, meaning destroyed, or otherwise rendered inaccessible. Oh, we know what that means. Foundation sites containing immovable Keter class threats have been thomically warded and locked down, supported by automated defense systems to keep intruders away until the Foundation regains control of the situation. Which you won't. Additionally, any assets the Foundation has access to but avoided using because they would draw too much attention in normal circumstances, such as paratechnical weapons and vehicles, infantry augmentation equipment and things like large unpiloted combat drones are now being used finally any rulings the ethics committee might make about treatment of the mutants is to be ignored so the gloves are off the foundation has observed that collectively the mutant pop because there is no cure because it's who we are there is no cure for who you are you can't cure that can't fix that. Yeah, what's wrong with you people? Like, what's wrong with you? If that's organically, naturally what I am, there is no cure for that. Like, and then, like they say on the X-Men, who, who told you we wanted to be cured? Anyway. You know what I'm saying? I figure this is a good way to get back on your ace! I'm sorry. Population displays higher rates of physical aggression, anti-establishmentarian tendencies, and other antisocial behavior compared to normal human beings. This, of course, isn't due to the mutations affecting people's brains directly, but rather what happens when you give the population of the world sudden superpowers and grotesque mutations. <laughs> This has led to some communities forming amongst mutants. Hold on, hold on. Listen at the disrespect. Come out this dude, boy. Now you was doing good at first, buddy. Now hold on, now I'm finna have to pump break on that. Now this world was beautiful until, until a certain couple species, a couple, several species got here and started doing what the hell they started doing. Like cutting down our trees and d dismantling the pyramids and doing all kinds of extra, man this place used to be and there's still certain areas in, you know what I'm saying, that ain't been touched by man's hand. That's, that's still, ah, uh, you feel me? And we can't get to them, though. They don't want us going out there because they know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of the twin power activate. You feel me type of shit. But anyways, y'all, man, and you ain't about to tell me that because we turned up that we destroyed the place that we made. We practically built the place made the place and they ain't talking about these these lame buildings around here i'm talking about the planet itself put the thing together terraforming you know what i'm talking about can you dig it the the all spark the power of the all spark terraforming 
Just like the sun out there. You know what I'm saying? That's why it don't bother us. You feel me? But it, it's got a whole bunch of people scared in under cave. You know what I'm saying? In the caves and underground, cause they can't take it. Why? Cause they ain't got what we got, and that that's a problem for them. So, but yeah, man. They, yeah, don't no, uh, uh, uh. But put it like this: what we're we're, we're we're considered creator gods. So what we destroy, we can also create again. That's generate, operate. And destroy it. So if we can destroy it, we can create it. And that's basically the power the Great Mother gave us to be able to create and destroy as as we see fit. You know what I mean? And if it's within the means of the universal construct of laws that everybody must follow, all species must follow the universal laws. Okay. So so long as it's in in, in the forms of that, and and it don't exceed the law of the universe, have at it, baby. We can do what we want. At least most of us. Such as we saw with Monica in Old Vegas. But because of infighting and outside attacks, they have remained small. Additionally, some dangerous SCPs that have now broken containment, some of which have also been mutated, have caused a significant number of casualties amongst mutants. The Foundation's best guess is that the total number of living mutants currently is no more than 5% of the prior baseline human population, which still leaves hundreds of millions of superhumans. What's worse though is that it seems that these mutations have continually increased over time, giving mutants increasingly greater capabilities and forms. Apparently, Earth was not meant to handle this level of anomalous activity and it is becoming exponentially more unstable, with earthquakes, fire spouts, new mountains and sinkholes popping up, dead zones incompatible with life appearing, and various types of animals falling from the sky occurring. That's happening right now. What the f- What? What? That's happening right now, people. Right now. I mean, unless you unless you've been uh, your head has been up under a rock somewhere, everything that he just named is going on right now, right now, all over the planet. Now you, you think I'm playing with you? You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 let denial get you up out of here. Academy say go for y'all too now. Don't don't let denial get you fucked up out here. That's what we tell you. That's why we in class now, so we can go through this. I'm trying to work you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Work you up to it. Cause when it comes out, it's gonna be like, what? He was not lying. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's why they got the okay. That's why they got the thing on me. You feel me? That's why they got it on me. Cause they know what we came to do. They know what time it is, and they know what we're here to do. And and I'm just asking that y'all just stand down. You know what I'm saying? Just let us work because we're going to clean this place up like it's supposed to be done. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't get to do it in time, then the sun going to do it. And you don't you know. <laughs> they know what time it is with the sun. Magneto's pause. Based on their current info, if nothing is. changes, the earth will be rendered uninhabitable by 2024. Obviously, the foundation is going to try and change things. That leads to our first section of the timeline of events that led up to this point. Things kicked off in October of 2018 when Foundation researchers stumbled upon SCP-3396 and became... You see, I don't mean to keep pausing it, y'all, but there's some things that just I just need y'all to get, in, get understood. There's a reason why he keeps saying October. And there's a reason why that... You know what I'm saying? That me, me and self, that I was, I was meditating and I got with him and they just, I was like, what are we gonna do next? And he put, he pulled this one. I mean, he pulled it right out of the hat, like bam. He like, let's do this, right here. This is important. And now here we are to number three, which I knew number three was gonna get good. Listen, y'all. It's definitely a reason why he keeps saying October. That's, that's next month. It's coming. That's right around the corner. And we got what they call Red October. Red October. It's the alignment of the planets. You know what I'm saying? Something big is about to happen. Huge. 
And I, they say something about two moons right now, the two moon portal right now or something today or something. Which, well, when this video, no, yo, okay, well, maybe, well, I don't know. Maybe it'll be past maybe when this video drop. But yeah, they got that going on right now. Yes, it's, yes, y'all. It's busting. Became mutated. It's busting. Two weeks later, the GOC and UIU became involved, and the three groups created a demilitarized neutral zone around 3396. Anomalous events began to be reported across the United States as the infection spreads, requiring the amnestization of over 70,000 civilians. Man, y'all need to cut it out. That's it a waste of time. It only took weeks after this point for the infection to be present on every inhabited continent, with an estimated 0.8% of the global population Because affected. we're everywhere. A mutant at an outdoor concert in London allows the crowd to fly by imitating a flapping motion with their arms forcing the foundation to send in two MTFs to contain the situation. They found that all 314 people they contained had been infected during the event, and they had to amnesticize a total of around 9,000 civilians. Things were getting out of hand, but so far the foundation was still handling it. Three weeks later, by the end of December, around 1.4% of the population was converted and Foundation personnel trained in thaumaturgy are assigned to ward Foundation sites from infection. Three mutants in Paris use their abilities to rob an armored truck, and easily dispatch the Foundation agents sent in to respond, forcing an MTF to come in and neutralize them. 18 Foundation members and 29 civilians also died in this incident. By the start of February, the veil had been broken as 2.5% of the global population were now mutants, and the Foundation simply couldn't amnesticize enough people or even worry about keeping the veil intact. I told you it's a waste of time. It's a waste Rodney of time now. breaks out across the globe, and the GOC authorizes lethal force against any and all mutants. The Foundation establishes a new headquarters in the evacuated city of Phoenix, Arizona, the center of the Orange Zone. Through this process, they moved nearly one and a half million civilians oh, and managed. Shit. Phoenix, Arizona, boy, that's the thirty-third parallel. That's a main energy center. That city there. Shout out to Phoenix, Arizona. You know what I mean? I got I got a good friend in, uh, from Phoenix. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yes, ma'am. Salute to you, ma'am. Um, yeah, that's that that is the th a one of the thirty-third parallels, like Atlanta, Georgia. Um, uh i think moundville moundville alabama is a 33rd is the 33rd parallel uh I, I think and i think there's one in cali somewhere i can't can't remember uh yeah yeah but there's yeah in the ley line <clears throat> yeah, nah, nah, uh, uh, uh. the ley lines ley lines is what i'm what i'm what i'm re uh, referring to so uh but the 33rd parallel is the main energy center of the ley lines well you know what i'm saying so uh yeah phoenix arizona on there. managed to contain around 30,000 mutants, creating a new containment area to hold them. Exponential growth really kicks in here, and within two months, over 11% of the global population is infected, and the majority of governments cease to function. The O5 Council passes a mandate allowing anomalous methods in the containment of the mutants, including reverse engineering of paratechnology, use of necrothaumaturgy, or necromancy as it yeah, were, yeah. and collusion with extra-dimensional entities. Yes, the Foundation are desperate enough at this point to make a deal with some sort of cosmic creature, whether that would be something like the Scarlet King or what? something else. Man, y'all already did that. You already did it. Like, what are you talking about? You already did it. You already did it. Let's not let's not even do that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know this right here may be whatever y'all want to call it, but I know this right. I know for a fact all of this this part three is going on right now in this on this timeline on this timeline. Give a damn what nobody talking about. It's too much information out there, and y'all doing too much fact checking and, and gag orders and all other types of stuff. You know what I mean? No, no, no. You ain't finna get away with that. Y'all have already did this. Now. You, Moloch is the Scarlet King. You already did it. You already did it. You signed with the Greys. 
You've been getting technology from them. Yeah, you know I mean, they've been stopping all your rockets. You feel me? Because y'all trying to do stuff with nuke. They already came and shut nuclear, nu the nuclear weapons down. You feel me? Like they on y'all ace card because you're doing too much. And you feel me? You signed with the wrong people is what you did. And they told you a lie is what they did. It's. <sighs> uh. But yeah. <laughs> This would explain why they could. Man, we keep only up with the eight movies. minutes in this bit. Not You're, that it eight. does a whole lot of good, because another two months go by and nearly forty percent of the world is infected. The GOC has fallen apart completely, and one of the O5s becomes a mutant as well. Which by one August first, the coming, numbers up sorry. to fifty-six percent, and a notable event occurs in the city of Jaipur in India, when an infant becomes infected and begins consuming nearby people and objects incorporating them into its body and continuing to grow. The Foundation completely fails here, and it requires the assistance of around 100 other mutants to terminate the massive baby, leading to the deaths of 206 Foundation members and an estimated 2.4 million civilians. Let's take a small break from the timeline of events to look at some of the weapons the Foundation brought out to wage war against an army of mutants potentially with assistance by extra-dimensional entities. The controlled innervation gauntlets are an attachment for the Foundation's infantry combat exoskeletons that deliver weaponized thaumic invocations in close quarters combat. These invocations cause the target's skeleton to combust by default, which is impressive, and the gauntlets can be loaded with more specialized invocations if needed. The Spectral Emulsion Ordinance is a piece of equipment for infantry that works like a flamethrower but expels weaponized ghosts and may cause residual haunting, which is not a sentence I'd ever thought I'd say. The Thaumic Resonance Oscillator is a bit more heavy duty and is attached to vehicles for large scale engagements. It works by using tuned etheric waves to stimulate blue matter growths inside of mutants causing uncontrolled bursts of anomalous activity. This activity is obviously pretty unpredictable, so it's recommended to be used from a safe distance only, but can merely incapacitate instead of kill at lower frequencies. Moving up, we have the Thano Penetrating Aperture Mortar, a rather unique form of long-range artillery that creates large holes on surfaces and causes groups of elongated, multi-jointed human limbs to emerge from said holes. These arms will detect any sapient organism nearby and pull them down inside of the hole, after which the holes will demanifest, allowing long-range dispatching of mutants while minimizing damage to cities. Autonomous neutralization drones are AI-equipped robotic aircraft, resembling WASPs, the travel in swarms to track and neutralize mutants. They are programmed to tunnel into the bodies of mutants and disrupt internal matter formations, with around 2% of mutants surviving this process, who can then be taken in as Foundation personnel after recovery. Finally, we have the Geometric Destabilization Artillery, aircraft-mounted missiles that cause spatial distortions in an area that are incompatible with life such as surfaces folding into themselves, or objects occupying the same space at the same time. These weapons are recommended only for use against mutants that have transformed into large, non-human forms, as it renders the area of effect permanently uninhabitable due to redistributing the circulatory system of anyone that enters. Hmm. So, with all this incredible weaponry, Surely the Foundation stands a much better chance against the mutant hordes. Unfortunately, while they may have helped to slow the spread, they certainly didn't stop it. You see that? By the end of August of 2019, 10 months after this all started, 77% of the world's population has been converted, and the Foundation has moved all of their personnel and remaining resources to the Orange Zone. The R&D team begins working on a new procedure to neutralize the mutations in an individual and revert them back to human. The process is dubbed Lilac, and involves a combination of magic, anomalous medical interventions, and radical surgery. 
A month later, the number is up to 89%, and the Foundation sets out to reclaim the city of Tucson, Arizona for mutant control, utilizing their new weaponry. The Foundation succeeds, losing only 39 personnel in the process, killing off 842 mutants and capturing over 12,000 of them. The O5s approve the usage of Procedure 01 Lilac on the contained mutants, which proves to have a survival rate of 0.01%, so there's some room for improvement. October 2019, one year after the start. The entirety of the human population outside of the Foundation's orange zone has been converted. O5-1 is lost during the destruction of a Foundation site as the entire site and surrounding landscape is launched into space by a number of mutants. Two weeks later, the Foundation continues to expand their orange zone, reclaiming the city of El Paso in Texas, losing 124 Foundation personnel, killing off 599 mutants, and capturing nearly 17,000. The Lilac process has moved on to its fifth iteration, now with a 6.1% survival rate. A week later, they recapture Albuquerque, containing another 13,000 mutants. On February 6th, the battle at 05-2's safe house occurs that we looked at last time, with three Foundation casualties and 43 mutant casualties. March 8th, another O5 becomes infected, and proceeds to send a mass text and email to all Foundation personnel simultaneously, simply reading, Thrive, before disappearing. Reconnaissance into the city of Santa Fe reveals that the entire city has become a dense forest of humanoid trees and anomalous fauna. The Foundation deems the city irreclaimable, and proceeds to bomb it instead. As March continues, the Foundation is beginning to run real short of supplies to keep containing all of these mutants, and one provisional containment area is forced to ration electricity and limit the usage of air conditioning. After two days, 37 mutants die of heat stroke, and the remaining mutants riot, destroying the containment area and releasing around 14,000 mutants back into the wild. Towards the end of April, the reclamation of Las Vegas commences which we read about back at the start of all this. The Foundation ends up losing that battle, pretty badly as it turns out, with over 5,000 casualties, capturing zero mutants, and only managing to kill an estimated 950 of them. June 4th, another containment area is lost by a mutant attack, resulting in the breach of over 17,000 mutants. Mid-July, Foundation Reconnaissance reports that a number of mutant communities have cropped up, most of them generally attempting to imitate human society, which is not really a surprise to anyone since they're still pretty human. This statement, though, yeah, is pretty indicative of how detached the Foundation has become from recognizing these people as anything but deranged anomalies, although they are still working to neutralize the mutations to save people. By this point, the accumulation of anomalous activity is starting to become noticeable on a geological scale, and strange weather around. events such as hails of biting skulls and sentient lightning storms are making travel and construction hazardous. By September, resources are getting even thinner, and food and water shortages at a containment area result in over 400 mutant deaths within a week. The director of the containment area makes the unauthorized decision to shut down the operation, releasing 11,000 mutants. In other words, the Foundation leaders would rather these mutants starve in containment than be released. Some time ticks by, and in January of 2021, a new MTF is formed consisting of mutants that remained loyal to the Foundation after conversion. The Foundation doesn't mind slaughtering these people, but they're not above using them as weapons, either. The world outside of the Orange Zone is becoming increasingly dangerous to travel through, as the mutations have affected Our practically bag. every plant and animal around. Oh, you want, March, oh, you want slaughter some? The sound? Foundation's work has done some good, and the world will still be hospitable to life in 2024, unlike after, their prior projection. After them two ace whoopings they took, they, they mad, huh? They want some instead. 
Well, we gonna get the on y'all. Twenty twenty seven, we gonna be on your ace card hard. By twenty seven, we gonna be on y'all hard. Betting the serpent's hand for at least the last two years. We heard from one of these individuals, Tilda Moose, last time when discussing the potential cost these powers would take from humanity. I'm gonna get on some like the Hulk round here. The city of Tucson is overrun by mutants and an MTF is killed in action after several mutants hijack some giant automated combat drones and reprogram them. The Tucson Overture? January of 2024. Just like back over there. The tree insect and the French Revolution started one. all of this. SCP-3396 suddenly begins ascending into the upper atmosphere and all Foundation Thomic scanning equipment worldwide simultaneously reads a single word. Thrive. A sudden spike of anomalous activity across the globe accelerates the timeline of Earth's inhospitality back to April of 2024. One month later, in February, the three remaining O5 Council members vote to authorize the use of the 99th iteration of Procedure Lilac, with two voting in favor and one opposed. Procedure 99 Lilac is very different than the first. And the plan is to use thomobaric stratosphere cluster charge munitions and detonate them over each of the planet's remaining land masses. This will lead to creating a destructive endothomic reaction on a planetary scale, violently rejecting all blue matter formations and attached physical tissues from every mutant outside of the orange zone. This of course means the death of every single uncontained mutant. But the planet will, in theory, be saved. In this event, what the Foundation dubs an see, XK class. See, here's the thing. I, I don't, I don't know why, why they use the term the planet. The planet's gonna be just freaking fine. It's your world is what you're talking about. That's, that's. I think that's the better term to use. Your world, because the planet herself, like. Tiamat's going to be just fine. She's doing her thing. When she starts doing what she's doing, what you going to do about that? Because she's been doing what she's been doing too. And y'all ain't been doing, you, been, you ain't been able to do nothing to stop that. The sun done turned up. You ain't been able to do nothing to stop that. But you want to, you want to try to stop us. You can't stop the evolution of the planet. You can't stop the sun from kicking out CMEs and X X flares and um and CMM flares. You you can't stop that from happening, but you want to stop you want to stop the people, the gods. Come on, man. What kind of sense does that make? It's it's I mean it's it don't matter. <laughs> It's like you, 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 man. You're you're definitely in a rock and a hard place, uh, uh, little little veil guys, the the curtain people, uh, you guys out there, shallow law, y'all, it, man, y'all, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but you know though, I'm trying to tell you. But you know, I'm trying to tell you. But you know already. You know what I'm saying. And this just this just goes to show that there's more more to the story. There's more to the story, more to the plot. Cause here he here we are, y'all sitting here talking about my folk on the low. You know what I'm saying? And you not telling these people. And y'all got us under under this this these spells and this light cold lockdown, which you know what I'm saying, we, we, we definitely been waking up. You know what I'm saying? You put us to sleep and that's all it's fine. The sleeping giant, you know what I'm saying, it's fine. We're waking up. And it's, I mean, at the same time, we're going into the age of Aquarius. You know what I'm saying? That's not looking too good for you because you know what that spells. Uh, no more belief in Pisces. You know what I'm saying? No, no more of that. The fish, the fish, uh, no more of that. You feel me? Uh, yeah. It's about to get serious. Last foundation apotheosis scenario, the only remnants of humanity that will exist will be in foundation containment. Afterwards, the foundation will attempt to go back to business to help recontain any other anomalies. It ain't gonna go like this though. Will begin to regrow out from the orange zone. 
Former mutants that survived prior lilac procedures will form the basis of this new population. Since I know you're wondering why they wouldn't just use SCP-2000 to repopulate the Earth, the author says that the biomatter reserves held within SCP-2000 that are used to create humans were also infected with blue matter, and would therefore be purged as well. It's possible they could use it down the line again, but it's not viable immediately. The Foundation admits that being the deliberate cause of such an XK-class scenario is their ultimate failure, but they will use the opportunity to start clean and to make a better world. Let's find out how that all goes, shall we? <laughs> we'll get to the aftermath of that decision in a little bit, but the tale thrives. I see you heard me about the term the world. War against the remaining mutants during the Foundation's reclamation of Tucson. An MTF armed in exoskeletons marches through the city, one of the members equipped with a ghost thrower, powered by a separate human heart. They attempt to announce to the mutants that they still have a chance to cooperate, but they are swiftly attacked by a woman covered in tiger fur with bone spears jutting out of her body. She one told, of the team what? utilizes a rifle that causes lightning bolts to strike the affected one of the lyrans and the rest unload with their various weaponry. The one with the ghost thrower lets loose with a sound like a chainsaw cutting through desperate wails as a faint blue light swirling with pained faces washes over the enemy. One of the targets, a mutant that appears as a person-shaped hole in space, gets ripped apart by the spectral emulsions until blackened bones become visible and they crumble apart. The ghost thrower gets sweeped over a number of mutants, one that appears as a dense cloud of birds, one as a tall man in a suit with a knot of gears where his head should have been, one that was a many-armed beast seemingly made out of plush, and three that just looked normal. The ghost successfully devoured all of them. Another <laughs> member of the team fires a silent belt-fed machine gun that causes gnashing mouths to appear wherever it's pointed, devouring targets from the inside. Next, we catch back up with Armando, who is currently seated on a floating web of interlinked arms among the clouds, held aloft by a large bundle of helium-filled arms. He comes up here to reflect, while leaving some arms down below to monitor for any danger. He thinks back to when he first discovered his anomalous trait, when he was 15 and got his arm stuck in a derelict garage that he had been poking around in. A large pile of assorted junk had collapsed on top of him, trapping and breaking his arm. He tried to free himself, hoping that he could just put things back the way they were and maybe no one would get mad. As he yanked his arm out, of course, it disconnected, and Armando vomited as a new arm grew out of the stump, one a different skin tone than his own. He quickly grabbed a bag filled with food, toys, and a picture of his family, and ran away. He rejected his arms at first, pulling them off, crushing them, hacking at them, because they felt foreign and invasive. At the start, he couldn't even control them, and barely felt anything through them. He of course also grew arms that weren't human, made of metal, or popcorn, or wood. Through time and some practice, though, he became more accustomed to them, and when he eventually got two arms with similar skin tone to the rest of him, he buried the rest and tried to live normally. He ended up falling in with a bad group that welcomed his anomalous power, but he felt like just another tool in their toolbox. During a deal involving some anomalous goods, the deal went south. And as Armando tried to flee from the crime scene, he got picked up by a group of agents in black tactical gear who shoved him into a van, after which he woke up in the care of the SCP Foundation. At one point he actually managed to break free from containment by fighting his way out, but he lost control of his arms and ended up killing an innocent. He realized that he could never truly be free as he was, and so he let them take him back. Partway into the Apotheosis timeline, the SCP facility where Armando was held was being evacuated, 
and while being transported to the Orange Zone, the convoy was attacked by mutants. The wall of Armando's cell sparkled and turned to salt before being blown away by the breeze, and Armando was greeted by a four-eyed woman. She asked him if he was coming with them or if he wanted them to drop him back off at the site. Armando quickly accepted and was converted, describing it as like a baptism. He says that whatever force was moving his arms beforehand was gone now, replaced by this new power. Armando watches as SCP-3396 ascends into the sky, and for the first time, he feels truly free. Fast forward again to when the Foundation unleashes their greatest weapon imaginable. Tilda Moose stands in an area that used to be Chicago, but is now only a desert composed of obsidian. She and others around her begin to rise into the air, half because of their own will, and half because of the force from above them, SCP-3396. She only dimly feels the impact of the Foundation's missiles as her physical body gets torn apart, and she calls the Foundation's actions pathetic. The mutants were now far beyond humanity, and the Foundation had really only harmed themselves. As they ascended into the sky, she wondered if they would be enslaved to this entity, or if their personal identities would be stripped away as they are fused together. She wondered, as she did before, what the cost of this all would be. Then suddenly she understood that this benefit had been determined long, long ago by whatever forces had created humanity in the first place. As for who exactly that was, Tilda was sure she would find out eventually, as she had all the time in the multiverse now. 05-8 looks out across the burning Pacific Ocean as this happens, and smiles sadly. He looks up and sees the mutants hovering in space and looking down at him, and he is very proud that so many of them had survived. It seems that 05-8 is certainly not a normal human himself, as he had spent many thousands of years looking after humanity and watching us grow as a species. He admits that he had been more partial to the ocean-going species, but they had turned out to be less intelligent than the primates. As he looks out at the devastation, though, he wonders if they weren't actually way more intelligent. In time, he had grown to love humans, though, bearing their sorrows on his shoulders and watching as they built great cities. He had seen promise in the Foundation's goals since their inception, but was concerned that they might be a tad zealous. Ultimately, they were a necessary requirement for human life to go on, and although he could have done the job entirely himself if he put his back into it, he appreciated the help. He instead chose to watch them operate from the inside, so that he could steer them in the right direction. He realizes that he completely failed in that pursuit, but it doesn't matter anymore. For the first time, humanity was truly free, and he could finally unburden himself from the weight he's been carrying for so long. As he does, he hears the horrifying unified roar of thousands of cosmic abominations that suddenly became aware of Earth's existence. This entity had been keeping our planet hidden for millennia to protect us, but now that protection was removed because humanity had evolved. The horde of abominations begin tearing through space towards Earth, intent on consuming it as part of a long line of devoured planets. A woman appears next to the O5, asking him if this is how he wants to play it. The O5 considered her to be the single most violent, barbaric, and disgusting thing that he was aware of, and she was also his sister. Who these entities are doesn't really matter as they are both supremely powerful, and it seems that one of them has been protecting us from the other. She's surprised at his sudden laxity, but he says that he has no reason to keep holding her back, because there are no more people for her to enslave and devour. He tells her that she's free to gnaw on the entire cosmos if she wishes, 
but he warns her that there are some rather disagreeable entities on the way here, and they'll kill them both. The woman wonders what the O5 will do now that there are no more humans to protect, jokingly asking him if he'll guard the rocks now. He says that he might actually do that, because he has no other purpose. His purpose in life has been defined by humanity, and he contains their sorrow, their pain, their endurance, and their memory. He stopped them from being animals, taught them, and protected them. He mentions that their elder brother has decided that humanity's time has finally come, and they don't need him anymore. Instead, he's going to do what he's always done, endure, and he will face the horde of abominations swiftly coming for the earth. He summons a colossal anchor that twists nearby space with its sheer cosmic mass and extinguishes every fire in a hundred mile radius as it suddenly appears. He hefts it onto his shoulder and asks his sister if she'll join him. The woman, containing the hunger, lust, ferocity, and rage of what had used to be humanity, smiles and says that just this once, she will. She disappears as an ocean of flesh explodes out from beneath the bedrock of North America, comprised of the rotting, shrieking corpses from thousands of years. The former Foundation Overseer armors himself in plates of the purest stone, hewn from the agony and valor of Earth's most sacred and worthy dead. He gathers what remains of the planet's oceans and ascends into the sky as the eternal guardian of the soul of humanity. And together, the two waged their final war. Another overseer, O5-1, steps out from his bunker with a much different attitude, one of rage and grief at the Foundation's failure. They had protected humanity for so long because it was the only thing he'd ever loved for the last 2,000 years, but now he was alone. He lets out a roar of frustration at the blue star in the sky that is SCP-3396. He then says to himself that he'd do it all over again a thousand times, even if he knew that they would still fail. He is bitter about what humanity has chosen, betraying the foundation and normalcy by going along with an entity that is nothing more than a mockery of true life. He says that had humanity stood with the foundation rather than against them, they could have defeated this anomalous threat, and endured as they've always endured. No he didn't, no this beast didn't, what in the f oh, hey y'all, what, hey, ain't that, have I not, have I not said that? Y'all need to be. Y'all should have been. You should have been told us. You should have been told us. It's too late now, though. You feel me? It's too late now, though. Cause it see like every time we come out with some stuff, y'all want to talk. Y'all want to talk a lot and come out with some stuff and be trying to talk about it too. Nah, it's too late now, though. It's too late now. It's too late for all that. You know what I'm saying? This dude saying I'm trying to blame her. Had y'all not stood against her. Looking for somebody to blame. You fuck. Ooh. And yeah, and you ain't got it. Well, you ain't got away with the fact that it sound like you've been alive for 2,000 years, buddy. You feel me? So, uh, yeah. I, I caught that part too. Man, you hear me? The, the, the nerve of this. Then, okay. Instead, they were seduced by power, and although they've become akin to gods now, he says that they have become less than human, not more. The individual known as Nobody appears, implied to be the Foundation's administrator, and O5-1 asks him why he abandoned the Foundation when they needed him more than ever. Yeah, the administrator simply says, that it wasn't the greater good anymore. And that's that. Finally, let's catch back up with Monica, who has now transcended to become a massive floating entity covered in towering metal spires, each the size of a small city. The towers contain enough power to vaporize entire solar systems, 
and with one thought she could reduce light years of space to a hot slurry of base particles. Her power was infinite in the truest sense of the word, and nestled in the center of this massive assembly of endlessly destructive engines was the form of a human woman. Monica kept this form here as a sense of nostalgia of what she used to be, as she had now lost her humanity completely. She had kept her memories and still knew herself as Monica, and even though she had devoured the internet and was aware of all human knowledge, she still couldn't forget who she was, and she didn't want to. She is aware of other survivors near her, such as Dozer and his engineers, who had fused together into one form, a monolithic citadel with miles of carvings of people and structures. Ogre and someone named Violet had married and woven their essences together, now existing as a great menagerie of plants and animals across dozens of floating islands. On the largest island were two thrones where they sat, looking out upon the lives they had saved with pride and affection. Norman was now a nameless moon-sized mass of flesh amidst a sea of luminous blue-green water. Great leviathan shapes moved under the waves, creatures created by Norman, and his mind unreeled for light years in all directions, hunting for minds to discover and learn from. There were thousands of entities like these, each one an expression of a human mind let loose from the constraints of possibility. Below them the earth burned and shuddered, with little life remaining from the Foundation's destructive capabilities. The continents had cracked, the seas had boiled, and all the while the entity responsible for all this had simply carried on. The tree it had been had grown until its tendrils had overtaken much of the western US, and once the world began to burn, it ascended into the sky, indifferent to the suffering and destruction. Now it simply hovered amongst the changed humans, simultaneously comforting and terrifying. Monica reflects on the SCP Foundation, a group she never had much love for, but she understands now that they had served a purpose in protecting humanity. She knows that she would not exist if not for their work throughout history, Man. but she thinks that it's fitting now that they would die upon finally being rendered obsolete. Yeah, freaking right. She had gone to some of the Foundation members that still remained before she ascended, and tried to convince them to see reason. Surely the definition of anomalous no longer mattered at this point, and it would be better to let outdated principles and prejudices go in the face of eternity. Instead, they had spat in her face, because they would rather normalcy be absolute than live one more day sharing a planet with it, such monsters. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Calling us monsters and shit? That's like, dang, dude. Like... I'm finna say, like, you sitting there, guy, you got such, such reverence for them, but damn, they ain't had none for you, though. They, they, at any moment, they was ready to splash you, girl, and now here you go. And I feel you, that's the humble, you know what I'm saying, and that's, 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 some, some of us didn't do that. You know what I mean? We, I, I guess, so to speak, say we went overboard or something, I don't know. You feel me? That's what they, they, they. Neuralized us, you know what I'm saying? And we, it's hard for it's hard for some of us to remember. You know what I'm saying? So we have to go through some of this stuff too to uh, get those triggers, and you know what I'm saying? Fire up those neurons, and all of a sudden we start receiving downloads, and the downloads start leading us places. And you know what I'm saying? That's y'all can't even tap into that. See what I'm saying? Like so. They, I wish they would just, I, man, academics, man, I wish they would just tell y'all the truth. So, you know what I'm saying? Because they know, they, they can't tap into the stuff that we tap into. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, they're not telling, they're not telling everybody about certain people, about us. They're not telling everybody about the metahumans. When I say us, the metahumans, you know what I'm saying? Because that ain't everybody. So, they're not telling everybody about us. And it's, the exposure is coming. It's coming, and they know it. But they gonna ride. They gonna ride the. Uh, we don't know until the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? They gonna ride that till the wheels fall off. Just like the. Just like the. the they saying the one that did it, the blue star. I mean, come on, man. I mean, what it was. Uh, the first thing I could think about was serious. 
You know what I'm saying? The Blue Star Series. That's what I. That's the only thing I could. I could think about. So this 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 some deception going on. This this story has been kind of. It's been kind of. You know what I'm saying? They've been they they put a little wash on this a little bit. You feel me? Like, cause this uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. Too many things are resonating with the stuff that I've studied. That's why I'm saying that academics. Oh, I think he got mo. The changed humans no longer needed Earth, though, as the rest of the cosmos contained only potential, and they would go out there and thrive. Monica sheds one final tear for those that had fallen to ignorance and pride and pointless strife. A droplet of molten metal drifting through space. Then she signals to her people, that's, that's and together they leave the Earth behind. Alone in its orbit, the entity responsible for all this watched and was pleased, because it had known the potential of humanity, and now it was realized. It also knew that this full potential would be needed to withstand what they would encounter in the cosmos. So that's it for Apotheosis. A tale in which the abnormal becomes the new normal, the Foundation burns the world to cinders in a rage against the betrayal of humanity, and a new collection of gods sets out to explore the universe. As usual, my summarizations tend to remove a lot of the poetic writing that makes stories like this enjoyable to read, leaving us largely with the facts. The Apotheosis canon is a very different take on the SCP universe. And while there can be many arguments about how exactly a scenario like this would play out, this is the story the authors wanted to tell. <laughs> this isn't the first of its kind to affect humanity on such a wide scale, nor is it the first where the SCP Foundation fails in their goals, but it is a unique blend of comic book style action, SCP oddities, and philosophical concepts. It's a rare instance where the Earth burning to cinders and the SCP Foundation completely failing isn't really a bad ending. And that's pretty interesting. Not really. A, well, well, I guess I guess well, I guess. well, I guess. Listen, that's up to y'all. That's up to y'all if y'all gonna let him speak for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Is, is, is it? Is it? Because... I, and I get, I get why you know what I'm saying he would say that because there was absolutely nothing you were gonna do, and y'all know it now. There's absolutely nothing that you're gonna do. That's why he said, you know what I'm saying, it's the the world burning to the planet, you know what I'm saying, burning to cinders, nigga. That's coming, that's coming. Yes, yes. If listen. Got what, what they say. Gotta have the blood of the sun. You know what I'm saying to make it through that thing. You feel me? You gotta have came from the sun. Have the power from the sun to be able to channel the sun. You got to be one with the sun. You know what I mean? Organic to the planet, like the sun. <sighs> yeah, man. Like Clark Kent, ain't nothing without the sun. Everybody knows this. And that's every and I ain't gonna say everybody knows what what they know, but in the in the in the background, behind closed door, behind the scene, you know what I'm saying? It's some people that know what's really going on, and they ain't got to tell y'all nothing. They they put it like this: they told y'all, but they're not going. If you expect them to come out and just say, "Yeah, this, that, and the third, mm -mm. they having a hard time telling y'all about the UFOs now. I watched some of the uh, I watched some of them some of some of the uh, the, what was it the conferences or whatnot when they just be asking questions I and mean, they're having a hard time answering those questions. Like, and then I hear like you don't want to be blamed for it. I heard you don't want to be blamed. You don't want to blame. It's like we'll come out and tell y'all, but we but don't we can't you don't be mad at us. I I didn't I didn't shake a I didn't shake a grave hand. And tell him he could take some people, and then they. Hey, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody did that, and y'all had to roll along with it. And any whistleblower gets, you know what I'm saying? Get the blower. You feel me? Um, 
I mean, damn, you feel me? So I mean, it's it's a it's a rock it's a rock and a hard spot. I I get it, but you shouldn't have lied, man. And now we're going into the age of Aquarius, where all the truths, you know, what I'm saying those lies must be revealed. And and whoever's up to this and put and, and started all this, everything is gonna get revealed. So that's why, you know, what I'm saying I implore y'all now, you know, what I'm saying if y'all run across this channel, you know, what I'm saying don't be. Using that cognitive dissonance, you know what I'm saying? That's not gonna get you anywhere. That's why I said it. it's not gonna get you anywhere. You feel me? Um, over here at the academy, I'm here to make people aware of certain of certain things, and then I send you to do your research because you ain't got to believe me. You know what I'm saying? You and then you can call me what you want. You're still gonna have to do that research. You feel me? Or you can duck it until it drops on your head. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? However you go, however you got to take it, you're gonna have to take it. That whether it's the truth or it's physical, mentally, physically, or emotionally, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to take it and you're going to have to buck up, bark, or I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And that's just, and I'm just trying to put that as lightly as possible, not to be as heartless as possible or cold about it. But these lies has got to stop, man, because people are out here just, just confused as hell and lost for the most part. And then when they, I mean, they're so lost and they find the truth and it's like, man, I can't believe that, bro. How, so how would y'all get like me? How would y'all get like us? It's like, what do you mean? We fail in frequency. It's, the, it's the easy, easy to answer that question. We fail in frequency. That's how we got like this. It's fail in frequency. You know what I'm saying? The higher you vibe, you know what I'm saying? But we're going back to that now. And if you don't rise with the planet, shit, yo, you have to go somewhere and energy... Your energy got to go somewhere, you know. It doesn't, you know. What I'm saying you can't destroy energy; it only dissipates. So you'll go somewhere. It just may not be you. You see what I'm saying? It just it be a spirit energy or something. I don't know. <laughs> you feel me? But I mean, actually, I do. But you know, I save it for another time. Anyways, academies, y'all keep y'all head on the swivel out there. You know what I'm saying? Go do some, go, go, go do some due diligence. Go get your due diligence on, man. Look up some of this stuff. Don't play yourself. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking that you not do. Academies, that's all I'm asking that you not do. Don't play yourself. Go and do some research. Thorough. Be a researcher. Don't be a somebody a look up. Don't be a look up. Be, be, do some research, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it helps to have some books in your, in your reservoir that, yeah, we can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so if, if situations come up, I just don't want people to be out here walking blind with these situations and just thinking that it's all good. It's 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 all good, but it's not all good. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely not all good. Not now. Not at this point. And I'm just I ain't, I ain't I'm not even going to hold you. It may look normal, but things ain't normal. You know what I'm saying? It may feel normal. But then again. It ain't normal. Two moons? That ain't normal. Planetary uh alignment? The, I mean, it's normal for the cycles, for things like this to happen in the cycles of, of, when on those levels. But for certain people, no, it's not normal at all because they ain't been on the planet that long. You know what I'm saying? Like myself and others like me, we've been around for a long time. Since like in the beginning. A long time we've been around for a while you know what i'm saying but there's other species here that's not been around that long and that truth is whether you want to accept it or not you're gonna have to there's nothing you're gonna do about it but i suggest don't get mad about it because it ain't your fault either it ain't your fault either you know what i'm saying that's why we need the ones behind the curtain to come on out of there you know what i'm saying that, that with, you know what I'm saying? With the black gloves on and all that. You know what I'm saying? Bring, come on out of there. Come on out of there. You know what I'm saying? Come on up out of there. Because this shit need to stop. Period. You dig? So y'all go out there, you know what I'm saying? Keep your CT on. Critical thinking. Don't just take everything for a grain of salt. You feel me? Don't need to take it for face value. You know what I'm saying? Every, uh, what they say? Don't judge a book by its cover. Get up in them books, man. Read them joints. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, believe me, you'd be surprised what what you see. And then once you start doing cross referencing, the cross reference is what really solidifies. You know what I'm saying? Your conclusion. Uh, because when you get more than one, more than three, more than five, six, seven, eight, 
Yeah, yeah. And it, all the finger keeps pointing at this, 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 this. Yeah. That's what that's more than likely that's gonna be a part of what you're dealing with. And then we keep putting it, putting this puzzle together. You know what I'm saying? And it's all our job is to put the puzzle together. We gotta put this shit back together. You know what I'm saying? No matter your race, creed, gender, none of that. You know what I'm talking about? We gotta put this puzzle together because there's things going on that people just need to be aware of. What you gonna do about it, that's on you. I'm not proposing anything. I know what I'm prepared to do. What are you prepared to do? You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do when the information comes out? I'm already getting my hands on the information and cried my tears and whatever the hell else needs to take place. I'm prepared to do that and getting that over with and, and going through that. You feel me? And I'm here to put y'all on so y'all can do the same thing. Get yourself together. Everything ain't what it seems, but everything ain't what it is either. You feel me? Okay. So, academics. This has been uh, a uh, apotheosis series. The apotheosis series. That means transfer into a god. You know what I'm saying? Which is about to happen. We're going back to the golden age. The golden age. Remember the golden age. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And the, the real reason why, why, that, why the, the, the corona of the sun. You know what I'm saying? The crown of the sun. That's what that means. Corona. It means crown of the sun. In the sky, that's what is, and then Corona Latin, Latin, what I'm saying. So that that that's what that's what this is. That's what's going on here, y'all. This that was a that was a a bat signal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, such and such is time. It's time for the think thing. Hey, y'all, it's time for the think thing for the for the for the crown of the sun. Those are the children of the sun. We're going back into the golden age. It's about to it's about to happen. These people about to wake up. How, um, we, we need to be trying to get off this planet type of deal. I ain't playing with y'all. But anyways, 